everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. I'm Brad Nelson. And you're watching Versus Live by StarCityGames.com. We got Ross Merrim over in the booth. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's going great. Todd, how about you? I'm doing all right. Make sure that if y'all have any questions for Brad or myself or Ross Merriam, uh, make sure to at SCG Tour in the chat and ask your question. Ross is going to be parsing through and picking his favorite ones to ask. Uh, also, he's going to be snarky and yeah. uh, say some mean things to me and Brad. Mainly to Brad. But yeah. you can also be mean to me. It's okay. He's just yeah. jealous. I can take <laughs> He does hate the player and the game. game. <laughs> <laughs> so today is Golgari Day. Yes. Uh, I, I've been playing a ton of Magic the last couple of weeks. I've even been writing. Hey, say Shocker. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I've been, uh, I haven't, don't, don't tell my, my, my testing team, but I haven't drafted once yet. <laughs> I just That's keep fine. playing standard. I'm supposed to, but yeah. I just keep draft. Or I well, keep, just do, keep do all your drafts on MTG Arena. Yeah, that's I have done a couple yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> do the draft on there. Sweet. Well, no, I'm, it is I'm, fun. You said you you haven't drafted once, so I'm, I'm just, Magic Online. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. text BBD Corey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, they know. They're, we have a spreadsheet. <laughs> Shahar <they> Shinhar, <laughs> yeah. Logan Nettles. That is that kay. is those are our two new includes. But yeah. I've been playing just an astronomical amount of standard and. I spent a long time working on all the red versions. I feel mm. like I have a good understanding and foundation for that. I wrote about that last week. And now this week, I was trying to learn Golgari. And I realized that there's a lot of cards you can play in Golgari. Oh, I, Just I, so I, many. I've had so much fun just kind of exploring the archetype and kind of dipping my toes. You know, Good uh, pun there, Todd. Good pun. Exploring explore. the archetype. Oh. Unintentional. Yeah. Uh, but, like, one of the first uh, versions of the deck I, I played against was a uh, gruesome menagerie version. Mm -hmm. And it, the, the, the thing that killed me was uh, Wild Growth Walker plus Jade Light Ranger on, at the same time coming back. Yes. Gaining six life, exploring twice, and having, uh, you know, just an astronomical amount of power. Uh, not to mention, like, they get a free Land of War Elf or a Stitcher Supplier. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that was really cool. So that in inspired me to, like, build my own version. Uh, I went like 4-1 in a league, and the deck felt really cool. I like posted an updated list for the PTQ on Magic Online on that uh, Friday afternoon, and two people made top 16 with like almost my exact list. That's awesome. Yeah, it was great. That's really cool. Yeah, um, I mean, the that's just that's one of the three versions that I've I've been able to parse through all the information, all the deck lists, and I've and I've concluded that there are three different ways that you can build a Golgari deck, and that's what we're talking about. And I wrote about these today on sarcitygames.com, so if you want to go over and check out my article after the videos, um, there's a lot of good information about Golgari in that. But today we're going to be showcasing the three different variations. There is the Explore uh, Gruesome Menagerie builds. Mm -hmm. There's versions that want to play Llanowar Elves, less, less of the graveyard theme. There's still a graveyard theme, but less of it. And more about getting hard to be permanents like Vraska and Vraska into play. Yeah, the Golgari <laughs> Queen, uh, notoriously underrepresented in the, the Golgari decks uh, in uh, the first like week of testing. Mm -hmm. But uh, after it won the uh, the Magic Online PTQ last Saturday, there were three copies of Big Vraska, three copies of Golgari Queen, and uh, one Vivian Reed in the main deck. And uh, like, peop it's just been everywhere now. I play against yeah. Vraska Golgari Queen in almost every single version. And even if it's just coming down and sniping like a, a two or three drop, the fact that it can kill like a, hist a history of Banalia before they get the second night's pretty cool. Uh, you you know, ramping into it with Lanor Elf seems really sweet. Um, and you know, later in the game, you start cashing in those extra lands or some. You know, maybe your your Merfolk Branchwalker didn't get a counter, and the body's not that relevant. You can turn that into a fresh card and a life. Also, w when they're Yes. Oh, sure. The uh, the woes of live television. Yeah. Audio issues. Hopefully that's better. For everybody. Hopefully that's better. Sorry about that. Um, I have the worst audio issues. I don't even know what it is. Um, I'm gonna go with. You're not loud enough. I can be louder. I think it's the voodoo <laughs> doll I've been using. Yeah, I I believe that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So one of my favorite things to do with uh, Golgari Queen is in play, you play um, Vraska Relic, Relic Seeker, Seeker mm -hmm. kill something, and then sacrifice the clue to Golgari Queen and draw a card yes. immediately. Yes, one of my opponents did that, and I thought that, or that was really cool. not clue, treasure. Yeah. The Ryan Overturf. I, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> you yeah. just want to sacrifice Ryan Overturf? <laughs> I mean, he's, wow, he's, he's a magic treasure. Hmm. National treasure. All right, uh, so that's two of the versions, right? Or did you get all that three? That is two. The one that we're starting with is more of a... Uh, the fundamental build of it is a very Will, Willie Edel version. And you can go get his deck list on his Twitter if you want to go look for it. Yes, you can get his deck list. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it, it's, it's, it's designed 
very much with his ideas in mind. And it's been like the foundation for my building of this version. And it doesn't play Lionel Wolf, it doesn't play Gris Menagerie. It's more of just a Golgari rock mid range deck. Um, it's it's a port over of like a Golgari deck from modern. It's just a couple planes. I mean, you think about it, planeswalkers, hand disruption on the sideboard though. Good value creatures along the curve, some mass removal, things of that nature. It's it's playing a slower game and uh, it's playing a lot of the cards to answer the effects. So like I have um, Ritual of Soot in the main deck mm -hmm. to fight gruesome menageries and to fight Slesnia tokens. There, and even the mirrors, sometimes just the boards get kind of big. No, I agree. Um, one thing I noticed a lot in the, the, the Golgari matchups that I've played is um, I use the back half of Fine Finality like pretty regularly yeah. uh, just to like make a one big wild growth walker and sweep their board so I can actually just like try to crunch through because otherwise a lot of times you just get these huge battlefields where both players have roughly five or six creatures in play and then someone plays a planeswalker and you're super far behind and there's no way to attack it because there's so much stuff. There's a lot of weird Golgari things happening in the world right now and we'll get into those another day, but let's just say that some of the most important cards in the Golgari Mirrors after Cyborg are Vine Mares, uh, Death Court Scavengers, and Carnage Tyrants. It, it doesn't make sense, I understand, but these are some of the more valuable cards in the Mirrors. I mean, if, if the Mirrors become a lot about Ravenous Chupacabra, I can definitely see Hexproof being a, a big deal, well, and um, Vine Mare just not being able to be blocked by like the Black Creatures. That's what it is. You have to get to the... like. There's, there's so many removal spells and if you like assassin's trophy of reska and they find broker it right away then you have to deal with it again so these repeatable ways to attack planeswalkers yeah. like fine mare along with fine finality or ritual of soot both help you get through but also sometimes i mean that's what that's what scavenger is is important for Just is make sure you can get rid of it permanently yes Dargali fine broker has been one of the most impressive cards out of the, the Guilds of Ravnica for me, personally. Yep. Uh, it's, it's funny, like, on that cycle of cards, like, I was all huge on Crackling Drake, you know? And yeah. I'm, I'm still pretty high up on Crackling Drake, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, Fine Broker's been awesome. Yeah, but we should get to the games. Our first match is against Slesnia Tokens, and I will be playing, and you've seen the deck list uh, um, tweeted by SCG, if you want to take a look for, for the first matchup. Mm. This version doesn't play Lana Ralph or Gruesome Menagerie. It is the Willy Edel mid-range variant, and uh, we're going to be showcasing how mass removal can play an important role against a deck like Slesnia Token trying to go wide, and puts them in a really difficult spot after Cyborg, where they want to bring in their big effects, but you just become efficient removal and mass removal. Yeah. It's really tough, but let's yeah. just, let's let's give it a go. All right. All right. High roll or 7-11? Uh, let's do 7-11 game. You roll 6, I roll 12. So close. So close. While we're rolling here, I just want to clear something up. We got a question from Sneal, and it's whether I got demoted after losing every single match on Tuesday, and that's why I'm in the booth. <laughs> yes, that is what happened. I got yes. the email from Cedric Phillips on Wednesday. He's not so very long. happy with me. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to be in the booth a lot uh, un <laughs> until a 3-0 happens here. So I'm really hoping a 3-0 happens okay, so I'll I can take my, over. I'll try my best. <laughs> I'm mainly happy. I'll just switch with you right now if you want. I love talking smack. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to keep our hand. Uh, this is just going to be, as long as we hit our third land, this is just going to be a generically decent hand in any matchup. Um, we, but the thing about Golgar is you need to be drawing. Sometimes, like, things don't line up right game one because you don't know the matchup. And uh, you do need to draw well for the whole game. Not well, but you know what I mean, not yeah. poorly. Yeah, my side, uh, we're on the draw here. We're definitely going to keep. This hand is pretty good. Uh, I just want to point out that Conclave Tribunal in this particular matchup is, is not uh, an actual removal spell. It's kind of like uh, a, a, a spell that buys time until they cast Veraska Relic. That is a pretty <laughs> that is a pretty good trophy for an assassin to kill an entire yeah. entire tribunal. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Um, I don't think. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, I was just I was gonna say something. It's just not worth it. All right, we're going to play Temple Garden, so you go. Mm -hmm. Now, we could play this Flower fl Flourish early, but since we drew land uh, for our first draw, I don't think we need to. So I think Dust Legion Zealot is the better two-drop compared to Secret Squire in every matchup but red. And for right now, I think that is a fine place to be. No, Dust Legion Zealot is very good against basically everything except Goblin Chain Whirler. And it's, it's even okay against a lot of their cheap creatures. It's but one life away from being the best card ever printed. 
Yeah, that is true. Um, <laughs> That's true. Elvish so I, I, I just want to point something Rafael out. Miriam's favorite magic card. Right now, for in like educational purposes, um, District Guide is, is sometimes not going to be as big as a Jade Light Ranger. But think about it this situation. Like, I would have had to have shocked to play it, which isn't that bad of a thing. But if I didn't draw this land this turn, I wouldn't have even been able to cast it. Hmm. And... And that is that's why I like District Guide more in this version. Now versions with Land or Elf, I think you can play Jade Light, since you're gonna have more green in your deck. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so we're gonna draw off a turn. Now I don't love the idea of attacking with Amara into a District Guide, but I also, uh, well, I guess we can just wait. I, I'm, I have a feeling he's just gonna cast like a, a Chupacabra or Golgari Queen next turn. Um, maybe I, I'm just gonna. Just gonna play history finale and say go. It is not so a bad choice. Get a knight. Chapter one. <laughs> Chapter one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are the. This is a difficult turn for me. Um, I don't really want to waste this because there's a lot of good creatures in this matchup. I can just play this if I want to. Um, that might not be the worst play. I don't know if that's wasting anything. Hmm. 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 Yeah, I know. Hmm. Hmm. It's a tough choice. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna dead weight dead that. Weight. I think it's one of the better targets for Deadweight in the matchup. Like there, there yes. aren't that many small creatures in the deck, and but it does make make it so like you can't play a four drop this turn if you want to. Exactly. Turns, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll move to chapter two. Get another knight. I will play another history chapter one. I'm trying to get um, a lot of pressure here. We're yeah. making ourselves a little vulnerable to uh, ritual of soot. But if he doesn't have it next turn, we get to flip this, and we're attacking for a large chunk. That is quite a large chunk. Yeah. I do have the city's blessing. Wow, that's just, that's like cheating. Actually, I have uh, Star City's Blessing, the new token by StarCGames.com that you can get at, uh, I'm going to say IQ's. Uh, SEGCon. <laughs> SEGCon, okay. Are you taking two? Um, yeah. I know you're going to wrath me, but I want to force you to wrath me. Well, yeah, if you blocked if that I problem, block, I could chew Pacabra, right. and then the board and then is almost clear checked, already, yeah. yeah. And that's the, uh, and that's the rub. All right, so one's going to go away. Well, you should stack them correctly. <laughs> yeah. Let that knight get to a 4-3. Okay. All the things are gone. All, all the things are gone. No. No. Todd, you, you had so many things. I know. <laughs> all right, let's... Uh, Actually, I want to hit my land drop here, so I'm going to flower and then this and get a counter on it. Sure. It has a counter. Get another force. Mostly I want to hit my land drop so I can start using Arch of Urf Urfgur. Go. Right. Arch is kind of annoying. It is something we can use to go late game, and the uh, Gogar Duck doesn't have a lot of ways to actually deal with it. It's basically just Assassin Trophy or Field of Ruin if they even choose to play Field of Ruin. Which I'm guessing Brad isn't, given how concerned he is about his mana. Five, yeah. I'm not that concerned now that I, it's a district guide version, but it, it isn't a land you want to play along with like a bunch of mem memorials. And uh, go. All right, so I'm at, that's the first blood, right? 15 to yeah. 20? No, yeah. you're at 19 from a draw card. Oh, yeah, that's so, true. 14. So 14 the, the Memorial Field 18, of Ruined yeah. Woodland Cemetery hand is not, not ideal. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to choose between basically Memorial or. Uh, Oh, yeah, that has Vigilance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you choose between Memorial or Field of Ruin. I don't think you can really play both. Close there, Brad. So, if you make three tokens, how in trouble am I? I don't know. I don't think I'm in that much trouble. I don't to be think honest. so either. So, I don't have a way to pump stuff yet, but we'll see. Need to draw like a Tristani. Mm. Transforming the the Adanto, or the Legion's Landing. Yeah, into yeah. Adanto. My hand is weird. All right, we're just gonna play this. 
you go. Or I'll, I'll yeah, make three tokens. Three tokens. Yep. All right. Well, I don't think I want to attack because an aggressive conclave tribunal allows a flip and the life gain. So I'm just gonna say go. Yeah, I agree. I think the fact that these have life link kind of change how you try to race. Well, and you're winning the race, and I'm trying to win the super late game. All right, we're going to take away one of them. Yeah. I don't love it, but I want to flip this to block two. Yeah. 12 uh, to, 20 to, to 21. Yeah, you're at 12. I'm at 21. Yep. One of these tokens is down, but we got our Dante flipped. And now we can say go and start drawing a card off arch or making tokens. So many options. Yeah. I like having lands that do things. So do I. Got four cards over there. 19 me. All right, I'm going to play Azoni the Two-Eyed. <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay. And that and say go. All right. Who's their token deck now? Yeah. <laughs> the good thing about this card is the first one does look like this sometimes, but this exact copy might come back for like eight later this game. All right. Uh, we're going to District Guide. Get a... Card is I and think that card's so good. Like I was scared of you drawing that just so you get all your lands because like you're going to main phase make a token and then I'm going to conclave tribunal the Azoni. Mm. Just so he can't start drawing a bunch of cards. It's not a bad choice. I like it. I don't. You're down to one card. I have one card. And now all he's gonna right. Vraska, take down. Oh, I, I basically wish. can't beat a Vraska Relic Seeker uh, once I start casting Conclave Tribunals. All right, so we're going to want to keep our Ravenous back. All right, so I'm at 17 to 12. Yep, and... Getting back. Okay, so you're at 11? Yeah, and I'll draw a card. Yep. Your turn. Guard Frame Broker, so good. So good. <laughs> Even just getting back a 1-1 one -one that draws a card, like... That's, well, that's I wanted great. it to be better. Right. All right, so I can main phase draw a card and see if I draw something like pretty sweet. Like a venerated Luxodon here would be pretty nice. So we'll draw. Hey, venerated Luxodon. What? <laughs> Put a counter on the we'll home shot the there. Yeah. That uh, is not good for the home team. How are you the home team? Todd's been here longer. Barely. They'll Still. call a comeback. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's have some velocity races, shall we? Yikes. All right. I'm going to sack this forest. I'm going to gain a life. Yeah, you're at 12. 12, and I'll draw a card. Mm -hmm. All right. I will remove a creature from your graveyard and gain two more life. I have two total. So yep. you're at 14. And play an overgrown tomb and pass the turn. All right, so I think since all of his creatures have two or less toughness, I'm going to Except basically just get rid of his fine broker. Oh, you have a removal too? Yeah. This is disgusting. All right, so let's um, I guess we don't even we don't have to. We can just pay the four. Yeah. Uh, I'll your Golgari fine broker. Play land. I'll just ship everything at the queen. Everything's coming to the queen? Yeah. All right, let's figure this out. So we have this. So these can trade cleanly with two of those. This can trade here. I don't know if I like that. I can, I can do this, though, and let this through. I think that's the best block, because it 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 you utilizes most of my creatures. Yeah, I mean, like trading here is okay, but still, like you 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 actually have trouble in combat against a four four, whereas like a three three can get checked by a branch walker that gets a counter or something. Yeah, I mean the other option is like I can do this in here and let it take four and keep a creature around, but I don't really think that that's mm. doing much. Yeah. This just seems better. So we're going to... All right. So these are three blocks on three yeah. of the lifelinkers. This is a block here, and then this will go to three. 
Yep, and I'll gain six. I go to 23, and this is all dead. And it's your turn. Blow the mana, draw a card. Maybe. I guess I could have just taken out his Golgari Queen. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do that. All right, well, yeah, I'm going to... I was going to say I was a little confused as to why that I don't know, man. Shut up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to five. I'm going to gain a life and sack the forest. Didn't float one. All right, so you're at 15. 15, yeah. And we're going to cast find. And I'm dead. <laughs> and I think the best pickups here are Ravenous and maybe Branch Walker. Branch Walker, maybe. Just pick maybe to it's, a random. Maybe it's these two because I get the card right away. It just guarantees card advantage. Yeah, I'm just going to do these. Hmm. We'll play this first and go to 14. And then I'll play Chupacabra and kill that. Yeah. And I will play a land and pass the turn. All right, I'll use a Danto, the first fort. We need we need to march the multitudes. Yeah, I am very scared of that card. Go. I feel it coming. <laughs> I feel it's here. All right, we'll start with a Marfolk Branch Walker. Uh, exploring before using Vraska is always important because you might find a card on top of your deck that you want. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's has to be kept. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like the best card against me. All right, so now I'm going to, so I can go up to seven. How many tokens can you make if you have, if you drew uh, the card? Six, eight, nine, ten. I can make seven. Seven, and this goes to seven, so you'd have eight attackers, and I could have three blockers. So I think I'm going to sack this um, and gain a life, draw this, All right, so and then you to 15. play another branch walker yep. and put this into play. Okay. And your turn. All right, I'm going to draw a card. Yep. Todd, you didn't play your March of the Multitudes. All right, I'm going to main phase draw a card. Yeah. So I'm at 16 now? Play a 16 I'm going to play a History and Allegiance Landing. Okay. And... Go. Chapter 1. All right, draw. Not an impressive card in this matchup. Tap this, sack it, go to 17, draw a card. Why are you tapped out? Because I main phase drew a card and played this. Oh, you oh you tapped main phase tapped out and played that. Okay. Yeah. Um, you cast spells and activated abilities. Nice. You get an emblem with whenever I get touched by a creature, I die. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty it's good. Not bad. This is a tough turn. Yeah, cards like Memorial to Folly just basically giving you the option to get back any creature in your graveyard is pretty nice, but it makes for some tough decisions for sure. Cost three to sack, I I, I, sacked, I tapped a four tapped, to start oh, my to, turn. Okay, sorry. To tar start my turn. I'm going to play that and drop back down to 16, draw a card. Okay, so 23, 16. Play a fine broker and put this back into play. Yep. Fine Broker plus Memorial uh, is pretty similar to actually Molder Hulk plus Memorial, which is one of the synergies I was trying out to begin with. Um, oh, you, you make a... Yeah. I will just say go. So now you do March of the Multitudes. I mean, I'm scared of it. The key, though, the key here is on top of drawing March, you need to draw Flourish the next turn. Yeah. Well, we can we can do a weird thing this turn and just like we can emblem and bait it out, and if it's not there, this is this is a unique turn. I think I'm going to do it though. All right, I am going to cast Plague Crafter and sack it itself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to emblem. Yep. Uh, 
And I'm going to attack with everything. All right. We'll march for a bunch. Yep. Uh, so three to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll eat your whole board. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'll gain ten life. Okay. So you take it all. Yeah, so I'm at 33, but my life total is not relevant. So March of the Multitudes just became a Plague Wind? Yeah, but now he's going to Plague Wind me. So. You get a Plague Wind. You get a Plague Wind. <laughs> Everybody gets a Plague Wind. I could have just, like, I guess, chumped for five and then forced him to sit. But I wanted to clear away his four-cost creature since I know he has the Ritual of Sit. Yep, I think I should just do it. Okay. There you well, go. go. Getting down on resources without a planeswalker when you have the arch sounds great. Yep. I'll have a planeswalker next turn. Shh. Or close to. Shh. Maybe not next turn. What is, what's close to a planeswalker? Mm. Arch of Raska? I can just memor memorial follow my fine right. broker and bring uh, back Raska. Four That's tokens. Yeah. Five tokens. Four tokens. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how are you even doing this? Uh, so I kicked it for six, and then I made a token, and then I, I... You had a card in your hand? Yeah, I had two when I cast the march, and this oh, was I my Oh, I thought you only card. had one. Okay, I drew, <laughs> no, I, I, did, did. I, did. I drew for turn. You thought march no, was I my thought only you card? Had, yeah, I thought march was your only card. You didn't even ask. Oh, I'm in. Oh, I guess I'm not even in trouble. What's my life total? Not uh, even in trouble has been called. This is another... Kill that. And... Todd still got five two twos. Right. You only uh, have one two two. You're behind by four two twos. I mean, it's not great right now. I'll say that. I thought I actually had enough to bring back and play the Golgari Grape, the Finder as well. Venerated Loxodon is so good. Yes, it is disgusting. Um, well, I'm running out of Wraths <laughs> and options. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe I wasted it last turn. I thought you had zero cards in your hand. That's why I did it. Just ask. I, I have, I've been using Arch instead of... No, I know, I know. <laughs> um, hmm. Too bad you don't have a haste creature. I know, Just right? Doink. <laughs> You're dead. Uh, I guess you technically have this Vraska emblem. Don't forget about that. Or maybe I have the Vraska emblem. All right. Keep your keep your Loxodon. on. Okay. That, I think I have to go... Get back. Fine Broker. I think I need to get back Fine Broker. Play Fine Broker. Uh, I'm going to return the land I played or whatever, too, just in case I draw something else. Sure. And I'm going to play a Murpho Branch Walker. Okay. Bring back Branch Walker. Do I even do that? This is so bad. Um, and reveal and play that and say go. Draw. All right, I'm going to main phase this. I do have a Vraska emblem. We don't yes, have that yet. It's right here. Oh, here it is. Sweet. I already gave it to you. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so we can still Danto. Play this. Um, I want to attack, I think, with just this. Here at 16. Uh, do you have a memorial left, or are you busted them all? No, I busted all my memorials. All right, I'm going to attack for four. I guess we can still beat Soot plus attack, but we can't beat uh, Soot plus removal spell. All right, I'll attack. take four. All right, you're at 12. 12. Your turn. Finality would be good here. Finality would be good. Kill the kill that. Be more specific, Go. Brad. All right. Kill your biggest creature. Draw. Draw a card. Yeah. I just lose to Soot no matter what, so I'm going to play a Shalai and say go. Oof. Go. What is that going to get back? Nothing good. Oh, that's was less the, good then. Was what you did actually better than just getting back Gol uh, Golgari Queen and drawing a card? I can't get back Golgari Queen with this. No, with this. I don't know. Okay. It was that turn. I felt like I needed the... Sure. Two creatures in play threatens. I couldn't b put it back that turn. All right. Uh, attack with everybody. 
twice. You bumped twice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you have dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hoping... F- I was just hoping for... Uh, the entire game, I was looking for um, Assassin's Trophy to just make a million guys and just yeah. sweep you. Yeah, that would have been nice. Uh, let's field a few questions here from chat while we prepare the sideboard before we take our quick break. Okay. We've got one from Tilted Mac asking Brad if you have tried an Abzan version of this deck touching white for Knight of Autumn and Lyra. I don't think they're necessary. I think against... Uh, I mean, Lyra obviously is really good against red decks, but I found that cheap removal plus a bunch of scavengers that you can... Or Death Court scavengers that mm-hmm. you can keep getting back is the way that I want to approach that matchup instead of adding more shock lines to my deck and needing to get to five when they already would have fight with fires and ways to deal with Elyra. Um, since the deck has to deal with it out of Susney tokens and, and well, Boros Angels and stuff like that, red decks are equipped to fight Lyra. And Knight of Autumn is a very good card. I think Knight of Autumn is a great card for a Selesnya deck to have access to, but not a card that I want to reach in different colors to find, especially when I'm playing the archetype that has Vraska and access to Vraska, Vivian Reed, um, other Assassin's, <laughs> Trof- Assassin's Trophy, other Vraska. Yeah, I have a lot of ways to deal with artifacts and enchantments already. Yeah, I mean, I, I love me some Knight of Autumn, but if you're playing a bunch of Assassin's Trophies and Guari Queens and Relic Seekers, that's not an effect that you desperately need. No, no, it is not. All right. And Ralph CIA4 is wondering, uh, he's had some success playing Takotli Honor Guard as a counter to these Golgari decks. Uh, have you encountered that card at all? Thoughts on that one? I am scared of it. I've seen it. I was waiting for people to start playing it. Um, Seems pretty good. It is a very good two drop out of like a like maybe a Boris Angels deck. Some deck that can like use it. I mean, tokens could use it too. Mm. It stops all of your coming to play abilities. It doesn't stop your Planeswalkers. And Enters your the battlefield. Removal. Enters the battlefield. Sorry. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Just... I'm gonna let, smugly let him cor- do his thing. Yeah, okay? smugly correcting him on minutia is my thing. Yeah, that's fair. All right, one <laughs> it's more not question. that good one of a more thing. More. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all I have, it's, Brad. It's, well, well, there's not a lot of room to work. All right, one more, one more, one more. Um, okay. Uh, ooh, T Drizzle three two seven is asking about gruesome menagerie in modern. Ooh. It can help enable a lot of the various like Abzan company combos. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if there's, like, a specific way to, like, self-mill a bunch to make it, like, uh, an auto-find for your combo. Grizzly I know Salvage, th- maybe? I know there's, like, I mean, Necroticu seems like a much better version of that, just because th- once you get all the creatures in the graveyard, a single Necroticu just gets all the abilities, can generate infinite mana, gain infinite life, and do infinite damage with Walking Ballista. So. do it all, Todd. Put it yeah. all in one deck. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but... Then put Battle of Wits in it, because it's 300 cards. <laughs> Gruesome Menagerie costs 5, and if you have something in, in, in Modern that costs 5, it better be Teferi, Hero of Dominaria... <laughs> oh, it better be dominating or the game. the equivalent. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gruesome Menagerie, <laughs> when you've got a lot of good one-drops, getting three creatures onto the battlefield seems really good. Yeah. And you can get you can literally get all three combo pieces. Yeah. Let's you go get Kitchen Visitors Finks. Here, Kitchen Finks and Malira, or... Yeah, or, or Vizier, yeah. Vizier, Vizier Remedies, yeah. No, I mean, th- there's definitely some, some uses for it, but it is very expensive, so. All right, yeah. well, we're going to take a quick uh, two- to three-minute break while we prepare sideboarding, and we'll be right back. Yep. All right, so we're here for sideboarding, and uh, I will be honest, I have played so many different variations of Golgari in the last couple days that I don't even know which is the correct version. <laughs> um, uh, this was a little outdated compared to even, like, me starting a league at 11 p.m. last night sure. before here. Oh, yeah. Um, I do think that the deck wants a third Assassin's Trophy in the sideboard. I even, like, reached for my sideboard dirt while we were live, and I'm like, oh, this list doesn't have the third one. Yeah. Uh, I should have double-checked that. But uh, this is a matchup where you don't have a lot big sideboard because your main deck is geared towards the matchup mm. already because you have a bunch of uh, Wrath effects. So we're going to be bringing in Duresses. Uh, Vivian Reed might be a card that you can bring in after sideboard if you have access to it. I'm still debating on that card as well. Um, but for the most part, the sideboard, you want to take your Playcrafters and your Death Court Scavengers out. These cards are your efficient like cards in other matchups. Death Court Scavenger has applications in almost every matchup but this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Playcrafter is the same. It's decent against uh, other matchups. But tokens, these are your bad cards. I'm bringing in Duresses because sometimes just starting a turn off with a Duress around turn three, four, five is going to um, stop something bad happening. Yeah. 
or at least let me know what I, what my game plan should be. Yeah, what plus, to focus plus on. just snagging a March of the Multitude at the exactly, right time is yeah. just so powerful. Because yeah. exactly. it is one of my easiest ways to kill you after you, or like before you can actually hit me with a Ritual of Soot. Yeah. Like I can just, you know, kind of combo kill you out of nowhere. Uh, from my side, the only two cards I really want to bring in are Tinder Shoot Dryad and the Immortal Sun. Tinder Shoot Dryad being a card that just it requires a big answer immediately. I forgot to make one other change to my deck. Um, sure, go ahead. Uh, it's important to replace these dead weights with uh, Brassless Contempts if I don't have the third Assassin's Trophy because uh, most of the time, uh, I don't think the Immortal Sun is going to be played that highly uh, in most sideboards. Mm -hmm. it, it, it it did some work at the open, but uh, Vivian Reed is a good card against this deck, and it is a card that you want to respect. Yeah, I mean, the deck doesn't have that many creatures in it, so I, I don't know if Vivian Reed is actually that good uh, in this particular matchup, but I also just don't want to sideboard too much. Like my that is true, there isn't a lot. Yeah, I mean, I have, like, uh, Amara's, Venerated Luxodon, Shalai, and then... But I mean, if you, Spada, yeah, it's, you know. it's usually good if you have other creatures you're bringing in, but still, just Planeswalkers in general are good against Golgari if, because they have to kill it on sight, and against tokens, the... The removal spells for planeswalkers isn't good. So yeah, but the 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 big draw for me with Vivian is always the the minus being able to kill a weird artifact or enchantment that could be and problematic, uh, and you don't play them. Um, and the fact that I can just miss pretty regularly with a plus just makes me think that may, it might not be that good. Uh, I did kind of want to get Spyglass in the deck just as a cheap way to uh, stall Brad's planeswalkers and force him to have like a trophy or a second planeswalker to deal with it. Um, so this is a consideration for sure. As far as sideboarding, you don't really want to take out too much of your token stuff. You just need like a, a massive amount. And Cockleg Tribunal is one of the few ways we actually have to interact with Brad's Planeswalker, so I think we want to keep this. So really, it starts to come down to either District Guide or something uh, small ball like Legion's Landing. And the fact that I can flip this into a land to kind of ramp uh, as well as just give me some longevity against the Wrath makes me want to keep this. So on the draw, I think it's just cutting District Guide. I'm fine with that. District Guide is there for when you don't want your Convoke Synergies. Sure. Uh, and you still have you're maxed out on your convokes energy, so it's not it's not that needed. All right, hit us, okay. Ross. Uh, before we get into some questions, I want to shout out to Tentacles for Face for subscribing. So thank you. Uh, first What's question up? is going to be for Todd from the Shining Gyarados. Is Camaraderie a card you want to see in the sideboard of these Selesnya tokens decks? I thought about that card. Uh, camaraderie is that the. Four colors, green, white, gain a life, and draw a card for each creature you control. Right. They all get plus one, plus one until the turn. Uh, it is a, a potentially potent card alongside um, uh, March of the Multitudes, but the fact that it costs six and has a chance to just have no text if you just like keep getting your creatures killed, or you know if they just uh, keep checking your tokens with things like Plague Mare or small balling you, I, I just think that it's overkill. Like when you have a bunch of creatures in play. Drawing a bunch of cards and gaining a bunch of life is not what you want to be doing. You want to just be pumping all those and killing your opponent. So, I think okay. camaraderie is cool. I just don't like. It's such a win more card that I would just rather have a card that actually kills my opponent once yep. I have, you know, that big type of effect. I can understand that. And for Brad, I've gotten several people asking about Assassin's Trophy. You mentioned that you wish this list had a third. Right now, it only has two in the main deck. That's a card that we, of course, saw a lot of hype for during the preview season. That hype has died down recently. Where do you stand on Assassin's Trophy in these Golgari decks? I've always stood where it's at. I, it, it's a it's an efficient card that you don't really want in your opening hand that often. It's something that, like, as the game plays out, it's going to be a nice card to see dealing with a bigger effect. And once, you know, you're killing a six drop, that seventh or eighth or ninth land doesn't really matter. But if your hand has too many of them, it's something you don't want to do. Now, I like the third because in these Golgari mirrors, you don't actually want to kill many things in early turns. You're just both generating a lot of value. But you want a density of ways to deal with Planeswalkers because the boards get clumped up and it's difficult to deal with one. So I'm, I'm under the impression that two in the main with the third in the sideboard is about the max you would want this card. And I could even see it not being in your main and just playing a bunch in the sideboard. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I definitely think it depends on what kind of Golgari deck you're, you're leaning towards. Like, sometimes giving your opponent a land is just too much. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, having a two-minute answer to any Planeswalker or a weird, like a flipped Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, like these are all things oh, that you great. need to answer in some spots. So. Uh, Mayan is, like, super risky, but I'm going to keep it. Minus two. We're up a game, so. <laughs> your turn. I keep a lot of risky hands when I'm up a game. <laughs> 19. <laughs> sure. Man, I wish I had Elder Visionary in my deck. <laughs> All right. Uh, go. D don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yep. Doing your thing. 19 all. Go. <coughs> Play a history of Nalia, chapter one. Chapter one resolves. Let's go. Chupacabra, attack for three. Wait, I don't even know if I want to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. I'm at 16. Your turn. Oh, that stupid arch is back. Dude, arch is so good. Yeah, I know. Um, Not a card I thought of when I was brewing Selesny decks, and it is super good. Just a nice little one right, up there. Play another history. All right. Double history draw again. Ha-ha! So. They are potent. Apparently Todd hasn't been, has been reading his history because he's been repeating it a lot. Well, I mean, you always want to repeat the good stuff, right? <laughs> All right, your turn. <laughs> All right, uh, draw chapter three and two. Oh. Pop this. What big knights you have, Todd? Hmm? What, what big, big knights, knights you have? have? <laughs> yeah, sure. Double block one. Yep. So you take four. I. No? One on each. Yikes. Okay. Um. So it just has to be Wrath. We went right. double turn uh, mode. Yep. Yeah. All right. triggers. Yep. Go. And you have. I have three cards. And you, you had the city's blessing. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm not happy about that. Uh, and you have three cards? I have three cards, yes. That extra token. Pretty great. All right, I will go get a land. Yep. All right, I got a plains. I got a lot of double white stuff in my deck. I already have three green. Uh, yeah, I'll play Ritual Suit. And and soot. Soot, sorry. Soot, <laughs> Branch Walker, Duress, Graveyard. Graveyard. Yikes. Yikes. I don't think a Duress is... I, it's too risky of a keep. You see it, now you just, like, dump all your spells. That's fair. That's definitely fair. Okay, draw. Goodbye. I'm getting savaged. This deck is very powerful. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm fine. I think I'm fine just trading two for one here. Am I? I kind of, maybe I just want to keep the pressure up. Well, how do you keep the pressure up? Pressure breath uh, at 19. Take <laughs> at 14. You have Arch of Roscoe. Why Conclave this attack for four? Mostly I, so there, there's a question. Do I want to keep this in the graveyard or do I want to keep it in exile? And I actually don't know. I guess since you have Memorial, I'll... Exile this one, force you to have a disenchant, but you have way more actual graveyard related things. All right, your turn. See, it's not good. Finality. Go. Won't, won't. All right, draw. I think it can go so well for you, Todd. you right. He still has Arch. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll draw a card. Yeah. I will go get a land and play it. Ooh, not good. All right, let's... We got to try to get some velocity here, so we'll go to 18, draw a card. There we go. Perfect, perfect creature for the job. All right. There it is. Let's, let's play magic. Your turn. All right, so uh, what do you have me at? 18 to 19, but I don't keep your electrode lever. I think you took lever. another damage <laughs> down to 18, but I'm not sure. No, I'm at 18 the second now. time you played that. Yeah. Okay. Executive decision. I Brad's shocked. at one. I shocked I'm once. at one? <laughs> I don't want to be at one. I think I'm at 14. I yeah, I think I'm at 14. Because I, I think I, I, sh I did some... Oh, it's some damage you're doing to yourself. Yes. So I'm not getting anything through. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> All right. Draw a card. 
Every time you tap so much mana, I'm just like, what now? <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? So, I guess this is not super scary for him, so I'll just play that and see go. Yeah, I'm unsure if I want to kill it. It's probably worth killing because it just trades with these anyway. All right, I'll just kill it. Okay. And your turn. Or, no, I mean, you can't really get at that. You're not yeah, a... Yeah, three, four, I'm at ten. ten. And Groundbreaker, attack your Fraska. <laughs> <laughs> Draw a card. I will... Maybe an Octavi Drake. Yeah, I'm going to try being all the Rasko. Your turn. Mm -hmm. Whammy! Uh, Six. I'm waiting for one of these games Go. for Brad to draw for Aska Relic Seeker. And I the know. game to immediately end. I know! <laughs> yeah, the card is so messed up with me. All right, I'll draw a card. I will play History of Benalia. Yeah. Chapter one. Your turn. Dress. Uh, need this. What's the other card? A forest. Uh, and you're at six? I'm at six. Can my thing put me at two? No, I would do that if that worked. Yeah. Um, I'm blocked. Go. Draw. Chapter two. Draw a card. Mm hmm. Bam. Uh, Legion's landing. Now it's no. over. Go. <laughs> March of the multitudes off the top. No, please, no. Fine broker, bring back Memorial. Mm -hmm. And... I think Memorial's better than just getting a creature. All right, your turn. Draw, chapter three, attack for four. Draw a card. Yep. Go. You're at six? Yep. Jim Davis is currently raiding the okay. chat. And uh, I'm not I'm sure what that is. Seven. Uh, he basically just hosted, but he sent everybody immediately to yeah. the channel. There's, there's lots yeah. of Jim emotes. <laughs> One, two. Hey, everyone from Jim's stream. We are streaming some standard. How's it going? And we're getting four insects. Okay. So this is an Izoni the Ten-Eyed. <laughs> Pretty good. And your turn. Draw. All right. Whoa. Uh, what is this? Three, Tristani, go. Okay, I'll sack an insect. Go to 19, draw a card. Yep. Draw a card. So that's not going to pump up for another turn, and you can draw a card with Arch right now. Uh... All right, I'm going to sack another token draw card. Yeah, I'll be at 20 now. Brad just built his own Arch of Roska. Sack yeah. another token draw card. 21. It's only drawn a bunch of cards. It's Rituals. so good. Um, All your tokens in that one. I'll play this. And that doesn't have lifelink on its own. Correct. So I will attack you down to five. Yeah. Uh, yep. All right, I'm at five to 21. Done? Uh, right. Yes. Draw a card. Draw for turn. Trigger this. <coughs> Draw. Yep. Play another Legion's Landing, get a vamp. Yep. Elephant. 
think I just want this to block and so he can't soot. I guess I should attack first, right? Yeah, I'm going to no, attack. You can attack. It just oh, they came just came in. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go. You can attack with that if you wanted to. <sighs> Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to shove it. That is a lot of power and toughness. I'll get a. I spend a minute interacting with chat. The game completely changes every time. <laughs> it, it is pretty absurd. Just keep getting wrath and just keep playing ten creatures. Brad drew a bunch of cards off of Zoni. I basically can never send a Zoni to the graveyard because he has memorial. Go. Don't you want to just attack for two? Attack for two? Yeah, with this. I just can't block. Like you just get it back and make ten more guys. Uh. I, I can't block. But right, then you can't right attack. Now. Okay. Sure. Like, if, if I keep it back, it's way better to keep it back, or you just attack me with a giant board. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. And then you've transformed the Legion's Landing, and then you get a real blocker for the Azoni. Yeah. So it's never going to get in more than the one. All right. Untap. Draw for turn. Chapter three. Yeah. Draw a card. This game is yep. either going to end... My turn? This game yep. is just going to end with the March of the Multitudes, right? right? I'll sack, I'm, I'm hoping so. I'll sack <laughs> both of these and draw and gain two life. All right, you're 23. Draw. Go. Might be green. Asks, is this game going to be on SCG Best of? Yeah. <laughs> Can we get no, Best of versus not. Live? Go. No, it will not. All right. Uh, sack this. Gain another life. Yeah, 24. Um, Sport does need a Doom Whisper. Wouldn't you like um, a Doom Whisper, um, Brad? Memorial this back. Okay. I don't know if I like Doom Whisper per se. That was a good draw. It was not a bad one. You're giving it all away, though. I think, yeah. you, I think you're the one who just gave it away. <laughs> you said it was a good draw. <laughs> what this board needs is fine finality. <laughs> Block. All right. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> sure. Um... Todd, to Tony the Brony says hi. That. What's up, Tony? Thanks One, for all the two, bits, bro. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, so this is... Fourteen eyes. Is only the sixteen eyes? Sixteen eyes, yeah, count itself. <sighs> Wait, are you just assuming all the bugs have only two, two eyes. eyes? These ones yeah. do. Yeah, those, specifically. What if she makes a spider? Well, she doesn't. She makes insects. <laughs> all right. Spiders are not insects. Shut up. Did I play land? Yes, I did. You pedantic jerk. <laughs> your, your turn. <laughs> pedantic learning is my invitational card. Go. You don't want to draw a card? Oh, because you drew March. All right, I will sack one, draw a card, sack one, draw a card. All right, you're at uh, 20, whatever, 26. I'm at 26. Good point, Hestaeus. What if they have compound eyes? <sighs> row, row. Draw. Well, I'm at 26 right now. Yep. All right, I'll go to 25. 25. Yeah. There's so many cards. So how many tokens can you make? 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18. Make 18? Yep. Is that a lot? It, well, I mean, it's not lethal, which is <laughs> the important thing. It is when he draws Flourish. Well, yeah. I mean, if he draws Flourish, I'm just in Target. trouble. Uh, elephant. You have two creatures that kill me through Soot, so I think I just let it happen. Okay. Go. Four, seven, ten, uh, fourteen. I'll make seventeen creatures. 
Do you have the blossom too? No, but then I'm gonna make fourteen more. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <I'm dead. laughs> I am dead, right? Uh, so <sighs> seventeen plus fourteen is thirty-one, thirty-four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six. You're yeah. not quite dead, actually. Hold on. Okay. You have to make sixteen the first time, right? So you have green mana. Oh, you need green mana. You need to keep a green. So, yeah. Up. So you to cast the second one, you need a green. Oh, sure. So, so you're okay, so short. You're short two it, tokens. So what? I said seventeen. So I make sixteen, and then I pay the green for. Then this, you make fourteen more. And then I tap. Uh, you still make fourteen more. Okay, so you make thirty. Yeah, so I have 32. I don't even know if this is... And I'm is... at 35. Yeah, I should still be alive. Yeah, and then I'm going to get sooted and lose, so... Hooray! But I'm going to be at a lot of life, and you're going to be at not a lot of life. That is factual. And you're going to have an Adanto. An Adanto and an Arch. All right. Also, you're going to draw Flourish. Draw Flourish. Draw Flourish. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Yes! He's just happy that we don't have to play another game. <laughs> yes, you, you are not wrong. <laughs> I'm also happy you just never drew a Relic Seeker. Yeah. I mean, point. maybe the deck wants a third. Maybe. These games consistently do this. Mm -hmm. Before we go into a break and you guys start talking, Decky1989 was wondering if Brad could expound on what your game plan was through like at the end stages of that game. My... My game plan was to find Relic Seeker. Planeswalkers are important in that in those board states. Um, some board states that build up in this game, um, I can just like. Uh, so Arch played an absurdly important role in that game. Yes. Whereas when Arch isn't in play, that both these games do not play out the way they did. Mm -hmm. I take them over completely. I finality on a broker. Keep going. <laughs> oh, oh no! He's looking for the three zero sweep. Oh, so he, he needs a three zero sweep though. Yeah, so, so he so gets now to play I, next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when Arches is, is part of the strategy, I'm needing Planeswalkers, an overwhelming board position. Mm -hmm. I needed to get back those permanents that were locked under the Conclave Tribunals. Uh, but that's the problem with Arch. Is Arch is so unbelievably good. And one of the things about Celestial Tokens is I don't feel like it's even remotely close to that power level when it doesn't draw that card in this matchup. So maybe the deck wants more arches. I think My, there's two. There but... should only be one. Okay. My yeah. version of Celestial Tokens now that I've played around with a little before I moved to Golgari actually had a second arch in the sideboard as an additional land when I board up to bigger threats too. Like when you go, you just... you. The deck already to the wants the Vivians and the Lyras. That well, the deck already wants to transition to like removal spells, right? Because you're taking out your to token convoke strategies. You want to bring in Silaways or um, some other removal effect. Clunge for, Nova. Um, well, but I'm talking early game too. You want okay. some early game, and because they're enchantment based, you're gonna get even though you're not token based after sideboard, because you're enchantment based removal. You can't lean too hard on it. That's an, that's for another story. Yeah. Another time. But uh, you're still gonna get to ten permanents in play. You're gonna you're gonna send yep. because of cards like Silaway. So doing it that way, um, you just want the extra land drops. One of the things I've seen from Slosing Tokens is when they don't make their land drops after they transition their strategy. Um, the the when they don't hit the fifth land on turn five, that Lyra, that Tristani, that Clumsy Nova might not be as efficient anymore. Yeah. And so or Vivian Reed. I mean, they're all five drops. Right. So, there's a, there's a lot. I mean, I do think that Celestia Tokens, there's something here. It's a very powerful strategy, well, but it, it's going to have to be a, a strategy that I feel like in a month to exist, it has to evolve. In oh, I definitely agree. I think that's true with very, most decks, though. I, oh, yeah. I, I completely agree. Like, Golgari's starting to evolve, though, mm -hmm. in the sense that, like, we're starting to do weird things and build weird versions based on the format. Mm -hmm. Control decks are starting to evolve. Um, we started with just Esper Splash to Fairy, you know, Blue Black Splash to Fairy, and now we're starting to see like cleansing, or I forgot what it's called, the Red White Dual Land, or the Red White Removal Spell, Clarion. Deafening Clarion. Deafening Clarion. Yeah, even Justice Strike. Like uh, the, yeah. I'm playing a Just Guy Control deck later later today, and uh, I've been very impressed with Justice Strike. Uh, the card Expansion Explosion has just been phenomenal for me as like just a win condition. You know, as the game. Oh, goes I've on. watched. It's so. Good. I've watched the yeah. streams. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree. If if this deck kind of stumbles, I mean, I mean, it's possible that cutting district guide on the draw is just not what I want to be doing. Well, um, it, it wouldn't have mattered 
if you don't, it doesn't matter if you hit your land drops because it's the consistency thing. And being on the draw, I think it was fine. You're still a tokens deck and you want to have the most powerful effects. Mm. It's just that you found that arch and that arch really. Yeah. Well, the arch is it really was... difficult for this matchup and maybe fill the ruin is important, maybe more. I, I'm pretty sure that the, my biggest issue is not interacting with your enchantments. And if I just had uh, more uh, Assassin's Trophies for this matchup, it would have made the world different. So maybe the deck wants to play upwards of four of it after sideboard and matchups mm -hmm. like this. I'm not sure yet. Like I said, I'm just learning Golgari. That's what we're here for today. We're going to take a look at all three variations of different Golgari builds. And in the end, we're just going to talk about them and figure out uh, where the deck's supposed to go. Because this Golgari feels like a crowdsourced archetype like this is like everyone go out there work on this we'll 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 get the hive mind involved yeah. and then we'll come back and we'll finally like in a month we'll realize that there's a version of this deck that's similar to obs on aggro from a while back with your doom whispers and your stuff or we'll see it as a control deck or we'll see that a splash is more valuable right there's ju there's arguments for all three splashes so i don't know where golgari is going to go but to get there we need to start the conversation start the process we all have to start working on it mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing here today yeah, uh, just want to point out real quick before we're going to do some questions in a sec. Uh, the, if you think that this is a good matchup for Selesnya tokens, let me just say this. Brad never drew a Vraska Relic Seeker in two games when he went super deep into his deck. And the fact that he can chain them off with like fine brokers more to folly and just continually like turn off my Conclave Tribunals uh, and just like generate giant boards. Like that plus the fact that I drew Arch both games just completely changed the texture of the games. Well, that that did, but I also don't think that this matchup is that bad for Selesnya. I think Selesnya can can keep toe-to-toe -to -toe with these decks. Like, I have Ritual Suit, but every time I casted it, you put more pressure on me. Soot. And Soot, sorry. <laughs> it's it's like the accent, man. I don't know. Just shut up, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's get uh, two questions, and then we're going to take a two-minute right. break. So, uh, Thunderdog22... Uh, asked whether or not, Brad, you expect the Golgari decks, as we explore them further, to coalesce around a single dominant version, or for there to be multiple variants that exist simultaneously. What's your expectation? My expectation is lo Golgari will loosely look like, um, like Obzon did. Now, it's not going to be as powerful as Obzon once, but I feel like there's going to be two different variations, one that leans... They're both mid-range, one that leans a little bit more aggressive, one that leans a little bit more defensive. Mm. Um, so Golgari doesn't have a fleece main line. And I don't know when the next set comes out if if uh, an Obzon or a Jund variation using these cards is going to be good because the thing about uh, Golgari as we know it right now is it's a value accumulation. None of the cards have giant power besides Doom Whisper. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like it in these Golgari decks is it's a sore thumb in the strategy. Like, yeah. everything's about card advantage, grinding things out, and then you just play the 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. And now when you're ahead, that's great. You get through your deck, you find your thing when you're way ahead, you find your zoni or whatever, but it, it's not like, you're not, for, like, these cards don't need to be force killed. Um, so playing that on turn five is, little, is worse than just Planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there's going to be two different versions of Golgari. There's going to be eventually one where we find the perfect mix of Planeswalkers, removal spells, card advantage creatures, mid-rangey, grindy, it's just grind you out, and one that is more Azoni, more fine finality, that variant. I feel mm. like we're going to slowly see them split, much like we're starting to see versions that want to play Explore Creatures, want to play Dust uh, Legion Zealots, or want to play District Guides over Jade Light Rangers. We're starting to see the split yeah. of the cards because they, at they're first... They're very similar, but they, they, they do like slightly different things, and certain yep. versions want that slightly different effect. We have to find the efficiencies, yeah. and we have to find the limitations, mm -hmm. and that's what we're working on. All right, okay. one more. And last question. A discussion about the various one-mana removal options in black. You've got Deadweight, which I believe is in your deck. There's Necrotic Wound, and there's also Fungal Infection. Can you both of you discuss a little bit the merits of each of those three cards? I'll field this one because I know it exactly. Yeah. All right, I've been playing a lot with these decks. <laughs> fungal Infection is a no-go for me because uh, it does not answer uh, Runaway Steamkin. Yeah. It does on turn two, but a lot of the play patterns you'll play against is a runaway on turn three or four plus another spell. Yes. And, uh, and, and you don't always have a mana on tap because you're playing no. your Jade Light Rangers. And, you're, and it's you know. very rare that a red deck will ever play a runaway and get it to three right away. Right. And so uh, Deadweight is the perfect for that. Now, um, Necrotic Wound, right? The Undergrowth spell. Yeah, Necrotic Wound is not something that I want in this format because killing creatures is something you don't really need to do that often in this deck. You have a ton 
Uh, the only creature I, I want that card for is um, Phoenix. Yeah, Rekindling, Rekindling Phoenix. Phoenix. But you already have a couple of Rastus attempts if you want them, and your deck has um, scaven Death Death Court Scavengers, which is actually the way that I try to take down a Phoenix. Uh, you can use double removal, or you can use a removal spell plus uh, a come into play or attack ability from Death Court Sca Scavenger. So that's the way I'm dealing with Phoenixes. And uh, Necrotic Wound, like, you need a lot of, like, it, it can't be cast till turn four when you want to tap four mana usually out of decks like this because you're not getting your graveyard filled. And it's not really part of the synergies of the Gruesome Menagerie decks that want to play Stitcher Supplier and Creatures. It's, it works when it gets cast, but it doesn't, in your graveyard, it's not doing anything, and it's not helping your Gruesome Menageries and, and things of that nature. So I, I just don't think it's an important card. Also, last thing to say is Deadweight can be returned with Golgari Fine Broker, yes. which is a very important part of having just a cheap removal spell that can just be yeah. returned. Yeah, if you fall behind. Like you, well, it's not even a fall behind thing. It's You can push your advantage. You can play a creature that sticks, play another creature in Doomweight, and then on turn four, Fine Broker back a Doomweight, even though nothing has been traded off the board. Yeah, yeah All that, right. that last point I think is really critical. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to take a short break here while we prepare for the second round of Golgari versus everything. It's the Gold Gauntlet. <laughs> it's the, the Gold Gauntlet. Gold Gauntlet. We're not going to be playing the same Golgari deck. Uh, we're going to be exploring uh, various uh, it's, va it's, variations it's, on the archetype. It's goal not because of Golgari, but because our goal is to learn together. Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching Versus Live. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.